Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter. And today I'm gonna to do a guinea pig in a crate card with my Prismacolor pencils. And it was inspired by one of the stamps in this Gerda Steiner stamp set. Really, really cute little, little guinea pigs. And there's this little guy, you can just barely see him. I stamped him with white ink on this cream paper. But you see, he's got his little paws sticking out there. He's got his little hands that he's holding onto something. And I thought, what could he be holding on to? Because it's got to be something that can pass in front of that, or else he wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to see his arms if he was just on the edge of something peeking over it. So if you do want to have him peeking over a table or something, then don't stamp that bottom portion of it. Wipe that off before you stamp it. But I thought, what kind of cage do guinea pigs live in? Because I don't do guinea pigs. I don't have any idea. So I looked it up on Google. I looked up guinea pig, guinea pig crates. And I found that there are some that have a grid on the top section and they have on the bottom like a tray of some sort or blanket or you know something that's solid on the bottom and then it has this grid coming up from it. And I thought that's what he must be holding onto because that way I could make the, the grid of the crate go through his hands so he's peeking out through that so I created myself with just a regular number two pencil after I stamped it, I created a grid and I just marked off, you know, figured out what kind of number difference. I, I can't remember exactly what the measurements were on this, but I just created something so that the grid wasn't going to go right through his face. It would have to be really wide in order to avoid it entirely. And I thought it would be kind of cute if, if part of it went through the picture but not right through his face. So work that out for yourself, however you wanna work that out, and then start coloring your guinea pig. And I wanted to leave him with the pencil lines in him because that's gonna look like fur. So I'm using a couple different Prismacolors to add some color to him. And I love the fact that you can't even see his eyes because his little nose is way up there in the air. So cute. The ink that I stamped this with was Lawn Fawn's Yeti. So it's a white pigment ink, which means that I had to wait for it to dry. And also when you're coloring over top of a pigment ink with Prismacolor pencils, you may find there's certain areas that aren't gonna take the pencil quite the right way. So use something like an outline image like this, especially something where you're gonna use fuzzy on the outside edges because that'll help you to avoid any of those spots that might have some challenges with coloring over top of that ink. So I'm gonna make him a black and brown little guy. I'm gonna give him one black ear and just give him different little color spots all over him. You can look up guinea pigs as well or know from your own guinea pigs that you own what colors they are and where their spots are. And then I'm using heavier pressure to draw some actual little furry bits. For his little teeth, I'm using blue just because that's gonna make them look a little bit different than the rest of him and put a little bit of blue shading underneath. And then I took some pencils. I wanted to have a little bit of dimension to the bars on the crate. Not a ton, but just a little hint at it. So I'm making one line first with a blue pencil. That's gonna go through everything. And then I'm gonna go both directions with it and then I'm gonna use black. And I'm gonna treat the black almost like it's shading it. So these blue lines are actually going to feel like they're a little bit more on the highlight side versus the black ones. So see my black lines are gonna break up so that they kind of go through it, through it, if that makes sense. So just doing the, like the left side of each one of those blue lines gets a black line and then the bottom section of each one as well. So that the blue line is on the top and on the right and it'll just make it feel like it's got a little bit of dimension going on with it, not a ton but that one has to go right across him so that he is peeking out through his little, his little crate. And when I was looking at crates, by the way, I also liked the one with the grid. It felt a little more friendly than the crates that I saw that had plastic everywhere. Now, plastic might help to keep him from throwing his toys out of his little house, out of his little crate, or his food, or his poop, or whatever guinea pigs might throw out of their crates. But I like the idea of him being able to like be part of the family and, and just kind of being in this big crate with 
with a grid sticking out. So it, it's possible these also have plastic around them too, but we're going to pretend that he just has this open grid crate that's kind of fun. So the bottom portion of it I'm coloring in a green, and I, I did that so I could kind of match the word guinea pig. I stamped that one in the, um, let's see, that was Distress Oxide Peeled Paint Green, and then the rest was just in black ink. But I wanted to have some difference in the texture of the, the crate here than I did in my, my little guinea pig. So I'm using Gamsol and a blending stump to smooth out that color. So you can see how that, that kind of smooths it out. Normally I put my Gamsol in the cap so I can have it out here on the counter in front of you while I'm working. But I decided I just had this little section to do so I actually dipped the entire end of my my little uh, my little blending stump into the bottle itself instead of pouring some out. I wanted to give it a little bit of dimension so I created a little lip for it with black pencil. So I have a little shadow and then I ran into a problem because I put a little more black pencil on there than I expected I was going to. So when I used my Gamsol on that, it got really heavy really fast. So I'm trying to do both sides of it, top and bottom. And then I was having a challenge trying to blend it. I didn't want to put way too much black pencil on the bottom. So I opted instead to use more of the green pencil on top. So with Gamsol, you can, <clears throat> pardon me, excuse me, I'm losing my voice. You can continue to layer color on it until you get it where you want it to be. So it was nice to be able to create a little different texture on the house that he lives in from the texture on his fur. So I have mounted it now onto my card base with no space at the top and then just space around three sides because I thought that was a little bit different than my normal popped panel. And I did a couple other cards too that I wanted to share with you because the peaking of the one little guy made me want to make the others peak. So this guy, I used just part of him peeking in at an angle and I moved his hands. So he was kind of waving, have a great week, 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 week. And then let us be friends. I just used the ends of each one of these little guys and I put the sentiment in the middle and just masked off one of the words. So now I have a cute little set of guinea pig cards to send out to friends. I'm so excited. They're so cute. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that like button. You can watch more videos here on the screen. You can look for links in the description to the products that I used or go over to my blog if you want to pin something. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.